jet systems. There shouldn't be any exterior security, so we'll head in through the front. Excuse me, Paladin Dance? Come on, this way. Security's already been dealt Diamond with. Diamond City Radio! This here is Danny K. Is this the Brotherhood of Steel's handiwork? Unfortunately, no. Look at the evidence. There isn't a single spent ammunition casing or drop of blood in sight. These robots were assaulted by Institute since. I'll be on the lookout. Roger that. Let's move out. This place is a mess, but I still see a few pieces of salvage that the Brotherhood might be interested in. After we're done here, I'll have to mark this place for sweep and retrieve. Looks like a dead end. See if you can find a way to get that door open. I'm gonna reconnoiter the area.
damn synths have compromised most of the city. Remain vigilant. We've got turrets ahead. I don't think we're... Over there! singing maybe Engine cores ahead. Should be our final stop. Watch your footing. Looks like the power's out in this section. Look at this place. Describes it. Field day in here. The transmitter should be in the control room at the top of the core, but it looks like the elevators are dead. We'll have to keep heading down for now and find a way to get the facility's power back online. There has to be a power backup system somewhere. Scout the maintenance area off the main chamber. I'll remain here to watch our backs. Engine core power restored. Thermal engine fueled, primed, and standing by for your command. Five second countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Engine firing. Completed with an efficiency rating of 96.7%. My god, are you alright? Got.
Wrecked by those flames. But thanks to the armor, I'm still in peace. The thing is that we're still alive. We have a way to get the transmitter. Let's go. Is someone present? anywhere. Fan out and check the signal lanes. They may have been after the transmitter as well. Let's get out of here. We'll take the service elevator to the surface. looks clear. Let's move out. Paladin dance. Well, that could have gone smoother, but mission accomplished. Smoother? I thought we did fine. That sweep was sloppy. We were caught unprepared more than once, which is unacceptable. However, your extra gun gave us the edge we needed. I'm not certain I could have accomplished the mission alone. I thought we worked well as a team. Agreed. Undecided, it's a refreshing care. change to work with a civilian who can follow orders properly. That being said, I believe we have two important matters to discuss. First and foremost, if you'll hand me the deep range transmitter, I'd like to compensate you for your assistance during this operation. I think you'll find this weapon useful. It's my own personal modification of the standard Brotherhood laser rifle. May it serve you well in battle.
Thank you. You're welcome, civilian. Now, as far as the second matter goes, I wanted to make you a proposal. We had a lot thrown at us back there. Our op could have ended in disaster, but you kept your cool and handled it like a soldier. There's no doubt in my mind that you've got what it takes. The way I see it, you've got a choice. You could spend the rest of your life wandering from place to place, trading an extra hand for a meager reward. Or you could join the Brotherhood of Steel and make your mark on the world. So, what do you say? What would be expected of me if I joined? You'd be under my command, and I'd expect you to follow orders. No more mercenary work. This is the real thing. You'd have access to advanced military weapons, as well as your own personal suit of power armor. Most importantly, you'd have the Brotherhood at your back, ready to spill its own blood to keep you alive. Offer still stands. Can we count on you? I'd be honored to join. That's what I wanted to hear. Meet me back at the police station, and we'll discuss the details. Coming to you from, uh, the Jewel Green, I mean, the Green, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the Great Green Jewel of the Commonwealth. It's Diamond City Radio. What time is it? Why, it's time for a whole lot of shaking. <laughs> because, because that's the name of the next song. I thought I would try something there. Probably didn't work. That's fine. Yeah, here's the song. Bail me out. I've heard that folks at Finch Farm need some help. The Minutemen should be the ones that enter that vault. What are you building?
Everyone else may be closed, but Diamond City Surplus is open 24 hours a day. Let's see what you have. The highest quality available. Brown, again. Plenty of his records survived. And now, uh, a word, or several, from our sponsors. Diamond City Surplus, now open 24 hours a day. Management reserves the right to refuse service to anyone, especially since... Hey, you like Louis Jordan, right? Well, here's a classic. From him. Conceivable good you could ever need is uh huh. I've got a few minutes to browse. Excellent. Yes? Diamond City Surplus! Open 24 hours! Well, well. Nikki Valentine walks into my office for a change.
What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So, you two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? I... I didn't make it in time. Kellogg was working with the Institute, and he... He gave them Sean. I've lost him all over again. The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there, but to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg? Huh. A man like that would have had access, in and out. But we both know that angle isn't going to work. Yeah. Any... other ideas, Nick? Talk about a literal dead end, huh? So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. I was so blinded by anger. I just wanted him dead. Now look what I've done. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. Who's this Dr. Amari? I'll let her give you her life story in person. Let's stay focused. Hmm. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads, nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. If you want to head there together, just say so. I'll head out with Piper. We'll meet you there, Nick. Sounds good. You two stay out of trouble. Don't worry. We're gonna get you a boy back. Just a few more steps. And by the way, at some point, you owe me an interview. I want to hear how this whole story got started. Hey, Nat. Read the paper, mister. Trust me. Hey. What can I do? Hey, Piper. You holding up, Blue? Why are you calling me that? Cause you're a vault dweller? <laughs> I know you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the Pip-Boy and the fish out of water look... Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. Besides, I'm already following you around. <laughs> Might as well get some quotes while we're at it. All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. Wait, 
They boxed you up in a fridge? That was the, the whole time? Oh, Are you saying you were oh, alive before the war? Get it? Because it's yes. About, uh, I'm over 200 years old. <laughs> oh my no. god. No. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? Kind of person who is uh, tired of living in Diamond Honestly, City. seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, it gives me hope. That's surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're definitely quoting that. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? The Minutemen were involved in this. That's the Minutemen. No matter how much you want to give up, don't. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, we should probably get going. Thanks again. Well, if anyone could figure out a good use for it... Big, loud, full of corrupt officials and brown nosing citizens, but it's home. Head on inside. Who's there? Nothing there now. 
Bullshit. Play, little human! Maybe by the Yingspots. I mean, it was definitely by the Yingspots. Wait, 
is. It's called maybe. I, I can hear something green too. So that's uh, one way to keep out uninvited guests. We we don't really make any caps, and uh, there are uh, lots of people help me stay in the air. People like uh, like this. Diamond City surplus. Now open 24 hours a day. Management reserves the right to refuse service to anyone. Especially since. Next, crawl out through the fallout. That's just the name of the song. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recommending it as a course of uh, uh, scientifically recommended action. Hey, hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. Insurance? That's right. Insurance. Personal protection, like. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Well, hello. Everything here is guaranteed oh to injure, God. maim, or uh, kill at your discretion. Hey, Cleo. I hope you're buying. Even a girl with an arsenal full of weapons. Let's see what you have. Purchase a variety in case of boredom.
someone could make a statue out of you like that. Abstract. Well, well. Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about little old me. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Hey, Irma. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt himself, all right? Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model synth. Is he compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right. Let's do this. When this time to the radio, Mr. Valentine, and, uh, you know, just me, sit down. Travis. If I start cackling like an old anyway. grizzled mercenary, pull me That's out, fine, okay? Dog. Let's well, see here. knows about civilization. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. I'm static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption. And we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Hey. Hmm? Piper. You know, the Institute has a lot of enemies. The Minutemen tangled with them once. The Railroad still does. I've even got some notes on these new guys. The Brotherhood of Steel. That Brotherhood airship is hard to miss. Eh, too subtle. From what I've heard, they take whatever they want. Especially if it's high tech. 
They just might have the muscle to give the Institute a run for their money, but they're... Let's just say they have their own agenda. You said something about the, the railroad. Supposedly, they help runaway synths escape the Institute, but... They're secretive. Ultra paranoid. The only thing I have is a rumor. A, a code phrase. Follow the Freedom Trail. Tell me about the Minutemen. You know that group you rescued and conquered? As far as I know, they're the last Minutemen left in the Commonwealth. They used to be a volunteer army, dedicated to protecting friends, family, and neighbors. Sounds soft, but they were a real thing at one point. We should get going. All right. Bingo. Oh, Battles are won with fists. Myself. Wars with wits. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. Remember, you are experiencing I told myself I wanted to find somewhere this made out from under the thumb of the first. NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. People always hoping for something better. They usually something worse. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. I'm sure that's gonna take some getting used to for a lot of people. Mm, what a... Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but... I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life, he wasn't a complete asshole. What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days. Like, before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop sending you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my 
To me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless, but you're not like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I won't let you down. I've always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what you're looking for. There's to be another inter-memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the Raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. The thing about happiness is, is, you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back, by comparison with what comes after, that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit, the gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You've got to give it a chance. The 
If I'd have got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's no, okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. found another memory to try. I'll connect you. How did you think this was gonna end, Kellogg? Mind if we uh, sit down? Suit yourself. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this all by yourself. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. There was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mind if we... Sit down. Suit yourself. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, 
You're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kinda ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more. And kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute, but I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed, and I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent... Okay, Justin, what about now? Suited me just fine. That work better? Oh, impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. Oh my god, lady, if We're I gotta go through to more of these memory things again and again ah, and again. There's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Okay, good. It was something in my Twitch settings, that was all. And here we go. Right now, the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course. Neither did they. Not really. The vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the law. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me. Oh boy. And I made sure they knew it. Hopefully it's all just... Fine. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. Oh boy. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but uh, I never like to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but uh, I'm still human. Sure Maybe you are, Kellogg. Up. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Yeah, Justin, that is her. Clutching my fake baby. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. 
But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Alright, so I got only a few to wrap this up with, and pretty much once we're done in this part, I'm gonna end it right here. But this is kind of climactic, so. So this is where we're gonna see where they go from here. Oh boy. This is the one. Here. Oh jeez. Here we go. Open it. I'm actually seeing this from walking around perspective. No! Wifey! No! Is it over? And this is me. I'm me! Okay. Stop this dude! Everything's gonna be fine. Stop this a-hole! Come here. Come here, baby. No, no. I've got him! Oh God! I'm only gonna do Don't this. take my baby! I'm not giving you Sean. And to kill my down. wife. Get the kid out of here. Let's go. At least we still have the backup. This asshole right here. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. I know. It's a real effed up thing, Justin. Right. We're good. I'm uh I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So before we get to the last memory, I just wanna say thank you for everything. Thank you for all who had come by today. Is that I hope I had entertained you guys to be a very as we still continue the trek so of the adventures of the Vault Gamer. So we're just gonna leave off tonight with this last memory, apparently. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> that was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. Oh, spare me the theatrics. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. Oh boy, so let's see how this pans out. Kellogg. It's okay. One of these days you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding. Oh boy. Well, some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. Oh boy. This is not good. What are you gonna do? Warp him? What the hell? Oh. They pulled up. Houdini on me. Wait a minute. 688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. What the everlasting hell? Teleport 
adaptation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Get me the fuck out of here. This is. Oh. Here we go. Get me out of here. This is some crazy effed up S. You should scroll up. Justin, I'm reading chat off the side of the thing. It's me, basically. Yeah, I know. Basically, pick back to your color. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? I'll keep that in mind, Justin. But it is that time for me to wrap things up for tonight. Thank you to all who have tuned in to this week's episode of the Vault of the Adventures of the Vault Gamer. So I'm gonna go ahead and save for right now. Cause I've basically logged in about nine hours in so far, nine hours total, which isn't bad. So we're gonna go ahead and quit and leave this off. And yes, Justin, don't worry, I'll keep it in mind. I'm not going to ignore it. And with that, guys, uh, like I said, next Sunday, though, might be a little bit iffy. We'll have to see what happens. So next Sunday, I might not do an episode of the Adventures of the Vault Gamer, or I might just do an early episode right around Thanksgiving. But we'll have to see. Anyways, guys, uh, <laughs> Jen shows up right as I end the stream. That's cute. <laughs> That's funny. Jen, don't worry. I'll see you on your NPA stream tonight. Don't worry. I'll be there. I'm just glad you were able to tune in too. And until then, guys, I will end this off here, as I always do, in Fallout 3 fashion. And bro, bro, you know where I'm going at with this. Until then, fellow gamers, this is That One Gamer. Ow! Bringing you your Fallout 4 entertainment content with that sarcasm that you oh so love me for. Until next time, guys. Stay beautiful, stay awesome, and stay yourselves. <laughs>